Hello and welcome back here to Assetta Corsa. We are looking at the back end of the ACD RTR Mustang. We're taking a look at the ACD 2022 car pack. I'm going to be testing all the cars, seeing how I like them, which one I prefer, and things like that. We are at Daytona ESDA Circuit. This is a track that I like to test cars on because you have good uh, hot, some high speed, some slow speed, and it's a pretty decently long track. So that's why we're here, going to be testing some of these cars out. Make sure you follow me on all social media, all which found in the description box below, as well as I will leave the link for the car pack down below as well. If you do not have it, so you can pick it up yourself and drive them for yourself. So without further ado, let's uh, get to the first car and rip this RTR. So full send in the RTR right now. First of the cars we're gonna take a look at. Decide to start off with probably the bigger power cars and bigger cars. So it kind of floated a little bit weird on me and the brace did not feel the greatest, but then again, this is the first rip in this car and these are all on basic base tunes, so. Not too shabby, but of course, we'll see where we really are once we get into the replay. So, the energy was a little bit weird. I didn't like how it snapped correctly, but then again, that could just be me getting used to all the cars. These are all different cars to me, and they handle way different than, like, my ESDA E36. So, the final run in the RTR. Okay, that felt a little bit better. Yep, this run feels much better. Gotta get the first run out to get rid of the jitters of the car and feel out the wheel. A little bit wide on that final section, but overall not too bad. So let's take a look at the RTR replays. Force feedback is way more than I'm used to. So we're gonna take a look at those replays. Here's the first run. So we're gonna take a look and see, and digress this one, and the initiation is gonna be a little bit weird, but. Hard quick, and then we kind of locked up the front. Probably need to adjust the braking in the car, but that's something to start dialing in. I'm just trying to see these cars in a basic tune, which one I feel most comfortable in. That's so much angle. There's uh, Nittos go roundy round in this car. So overall, not too bad on that one. This run was definitely a better run. Should have had our lights on. So this one was a much better run, so we're going to digress this one in a full entirety. A little bit slow on initiation, but we did manage to get out to the zones. Midway in that one. Kind of drew a line there, pretty decent. So not getting all the way out fully to the zones, but once again, it's only second run in the car. So overall, the RTR definitely handled pretty well. So now we're going to switch up cars, get another car, and we'll be right back. Second car on the block is going to be this supercharged uh, E30. Back in the Beamer chassis. I definitely like how this one looks. So, only thing we are adjusting is our brake pressure. We're di dialing the brake pressure back a little bit, but that's just personal preference for left foot brake. Everything else is the same. So, full send. Watch this gear hit. I should not have pulled the handbrake on that one. This car was feeling up to be way better than that RTR personal feel. So we're going to do that again. But we're going to try not to handbrake in there. Just going to try and clutch kick our way in because we didn't need to. Probably going to try and start and get in the fifth as soon as possible. Second run the E30.
Yeah, that's what we needed to do. I don't know why I grabbed handbrake. Kind of needed to grab it there because it's a little bit offline. But other than that, this definitely feels much more solid than that RTR did in my hands anyway. So let's take a look at the replay of the two runs. See kind of where we're at at E30. It's so aggressive though. I love the way that looks. So we painted a pretty decent line there. We could have been way deeper, but yeah, if we wouldn't have ripped the e-brake right there, which threw us way off, we would have been way better. Um, we didn't need e-brake to complete the run, so definitely something we're trying to uh, we're trying to work on. Um, not tugging that e-brake where I don't need to. It was something that I noticed I was doing throughout the ESDA season, so it's things I'm starting to work on now is not, you know, pulling that, things that I've learned. So let's take a look at this one. This run was much better. Not as deep on the wall initiation, but that was a pretty good clip, and so was there. Nice, smooth transition all the way deep there. And kind of painting a line there. So overall, I feel like this run was better than the RTR run. So let me know down in the comments once we go through all the cars for today's episode, which one you think was the better of all of them. So we're going to change up to the next car, which is another BMW chassis, and we're going to see how that one does. Is next. Now, I know a lot of people are probably saying, well, you can't get a good feel of the cars after just two runs. Correct. But I can feel which car feels the best for me initially, and then fine-tune it from there. So two runs with the C36, make sure we're at full boost. I don't know why I don't have my boost Turned on my dials. E36, probably gonna be fifth gear. Oh, I thought I was gonna piff into that wall. A little shallow there. And then we push that wide. This car does not have as much rear bite as that E30 did. And that could be just a testament to both the first two cars were V8s, and this is uh, not a V8. So we could dial in some rear grip with some uh, camber and some toe, but we're running these all out of the box, which is a brake pressure change. So to get the best feel of them initially. Kind of. Got a little sluggish to that corner. Yeah, this car does not have as much rear bite as the E30 or the RTR did. But overall, not too bad. I bet you if I dialed in some rear bite on this car, it would actually probably feel quite well. Definitely so different than my uh, USDA E36, that's for sure. Yep, kind of floated way out there. It almost like it kind of drifted, well, floated back, and that was on braking, which it naturally would do if that floated way back, way faster than I expected it to. Second run in this car. Probably do one more car for today's episode, and then we're gonna do the other cars in the, in the next episode and go all the way down the list of these cars. A lot of BMWs in this uh, in this pack. Yeah, that one just floated too wide, also. So overall, so far the E30 is my favorite. We're gonna run one more car for today's episode. Let me know down in the comments which one you guys think is the best. The next car is a car you don't often see anybody building or drifting an e90 so i see these all the time at my work but this is not something that you see in a set of corsa is an e90 so we're gonna do a full set of the z90 for today's final car oof all these cars are fifth gear like i said we could be doing some fine tuning and stuff like that but we're running these out of the box to get my initial impressions on them Also, Ooh, we almost hit that wall. Kind of 
clutch kicking it through there. Ah, too much on the brake. Too much left foot brake, and we are in the dirt. Ah, oh, that was looking very promising. But this car, as soon as you hit the brakes, it's almost right around. Oh, okay. So apparently I do have a spawn to pits on my pit button. So that's a good thing to know on the wheel I have it. Because I haven't recalibrated all my buttons from going back to the R9. Alright, final run in this. Very soft setup. And that could be why it unsettled and you're breaking because it's so soft. Totally missed that outer zone. A little less braking. Very soft setup though, but not too bad of a run. So we're gonna take a look at these two runs for this final. I don't know why I keep going on the keyboard. For this final car of this episode. And like I said, let me know down in the comments which car you think was the best of these these four for today's episode. E30. The uh, E36, the RTR, or the E90. I know what my personal car I felt I felt the most in, but I want you guys to be the unbiased opinion. Although this E90 was getting it though. Too much on the left foot brake sent us looping into the dirt. So that was the unfortunate part of that run. So make sure you guys follow me on all social media, all which you found in the description box below. I appreciate it. We come back for another episode. As always, drop a like if you like this video. And like I said, let me know down below which car you think was the best of the four in this episode. And then we're going to continue in the next episode with more cars. we got a couple more BMWs, and we're getting into some big, uh, big cars. So as always, I thank you guys for coming back and watching. I'm Evil Rabbit. I'll see you guys on the track.